Welcome friends. I am here in the Moore Akami Museum. If you don't know where that it is, it's in South Florida, Delray Beach. And this is an amazing 188 acre property that people can come to and enjoy. These are all Japanese gardens, composed of six Japanese gardens in total. It has a museum. The museum was opened back in 1977 and the gardens were finalized in 2001. And it is absolutely beautiful here. I mean, we're talking about pristine Japanese gardens with trees and bamboo, koi fish. It is gorgeous here. And the reason that I want to make this video today while I'm here is to tell you about five ways that you can be Zen centered. And recently a Patreon, if you would like to donate to the channel, the links are below, asked me how I stay so centered and so calm in the face of such a chaotic world. So I thought of five reasons why I stay so calm and centered in my life, and I wanted to share them with you. Now, the first one to realize is that our spiritual progress is basically the most important thing in our life. And I think a lot of people place a high value on career, relationships, finances, acquiring material possessions, but for me, that's not what drives me. What drives me is the desire to level up my spirituality, to reduce my entropy, and to increase my quality of consciousness. And just to be out here in nature is absolutely beautiful. If you get if you're seeing some of this, it, the camera does not capture the essence of this place. And I've quoted this on my channel before, but Russell Crowe in the movie Gladiator said that what we do in life echoes in eternity. Everything that we do is all written down in the database, in the Akashic records. So why not live your best life? Does it really matter what car you drive? Does it matter where you went to? It really only matters that you are leveling up yourself spiritually. So that's the number one thing that I always think about. And the number two thing is to live within your means. And for that, really, you need to construct your life. I know I've constructed my life in such a way, whereas I don't need to have a lot of money to really love life. And I've done it through simplification and I've done it through minimalization. I don't have a lot of expensive stuff. Actually, probably one of the most expensive items that I have is really my camera equipment for making these videos. But I get a lot of enjoyment just being in nature in some place like this. It is absolutely just spectacular. I could just be out here for the entire day thinking about the books I've read, the spiritual, the quotes. If you haven't seen some of my videos, Check out this video right here on spiritual quotes. I think you'll really enjoy it. And so this is the way I've constructed my life, to not need a lot of money to be happy. Now I make a certain amount of money and that pays my bills. And I don't really need much more than that. And that is the reason that I'm able to be so carefree and stress-free because I'm not really worrying too much about the finances. I think if you can get that in order, then you're going to be much more zen and centered in your life. It's when you have to always keep up with the Joneses. That's the point at which you feel as if you always need more and more to impress people. And that brings me to the third reason, which is don't care what other people think. You know, a lot of people, they, they put a lot of thought into what other people think about their life especially even their family, their parents. There's a lot of guilt that goes on. I don't have that. I have a very small family, only my mother, and she accepts me for just as how I am. And she never puts pressure on me to get married, have children. I don't have any other pressure. Uh, so I'm quite different in many people. I know a lot of people have pressure from family, friends to succeed in life. People want the money so they can attract the mate, so that they can have the big house and all that stuff. But that's just ego attachment. That's desire. And that's another reason why if you should read Buddha and you should let go of 
of attachment because it's always going to create fear and that's always going to raise your entropy and it's going to make your life worse because you could never ever have enough there's always somebody who has more than you so I let that go a long time ago and number four would be that mental problems become physical problems and I think a lot of people experience that but they don't understand what's happening and people call it psychosomatic there was a woman named Louise Hay who wrote a book all about this about how different mental issues affect different physical parts of the body and so for me I know that if I have anguish if I have mental stress eventually if I hold on to that it's going to affect my body and so what I've realized is that health is the first wealth and there is no price to health so if I lost money if something bad happened especially if it's out of my control I've learned to let it go I don't fret over it because I know in the long run it's going to be way better for my health and eventually my peace of mind. And I think the reason why so many people are in a bad position, especially physically, is because they're holding on to guilt, fear, regret, um, making bad decisions, lamenting over it. These are things you just have to let go because this is a virtual reality trainer for consciousness, this whole reality. It's all about learning, it's all about accepting, and it's all about moving on and becoming better and better. And you can't do that when you're harboring fear. You know, the famous writer Christopher Morley said, the only success in life is to be able to spend it in your own way. And one of the ways I like to spend my life, and this brings me to point number five, is that you just need to find simplicity and beauty in the simple things. Find things that don't cost a lot of money to bring enjoyment into your life. Riding a bike, playing a sport, walking in the park, reading books, doing art, all of these things don't really require a lot of money. And I've learned this a long time ago. I don't need to take cruises, exotic trips. Sure, that's nice if you can afford it by all means, but most people can't. And I think not, even if you can't afford it and you take an exotic trip every two weeks of the year, I mean, you really want to be doing things that are enjoyable every day. So I try to put those activities into my schedule every day. That means bike riding for maybe 45 minutes or walking out in nature or maybe playing tennis, working on art, just reading a book, doing all the things that are pleasurable that don't really cost a lot of money. And for me also just being productive, just knowing, just making this channel, knowing I'm helping people. I'm always doing things that are aiding in my spiritual development, that are making me feel better as a person and as a, as a soul in a physical body. Guys, look, look, I mean, this place is, <laughs> I wish you could all be here with me right now. In a sense you are, but I am just loving this whole place. I gotta come back here and shoot some more video. You know, the Buddha said, in terms of comparison, I think a lot of people also, where they falter is with comparison. Like I said, people are comparing themselves to their neighbors, to the Joneses, always trying to be one better. But Buddha said, the flower blooms by itself, for itself. It doesn't look at its neighbor and compare itself. It just blooms on its own. And he also said, that the key to health in mind and body is not to worry about the future, it's not to lament about the past, and it's not to concern yourself with your troubles, but it's to be here and now in the present, and that's the way to truly live wisely and earnestly. And the Buddha's had, he had so many great quotes that are apropos, and if we only followed that, I think a lot of people actually know this, but they don't do it. And so I just wanted to make this video today to share with you some of my thinking and how I stay centered and calm. And I truly hope that you can employ some of what I do in my life to make your life better. 
Guys, if you have any questions for me, please drop them in the comments section. I'd be glad to answer them in the comments section or in future videos. I very much appreciate all the PayPal and Patreon people supporting the channel. Thank you so much. It helps me continue on with making the videos for you guys. And I've got so many more planned. And ultimately, I just want to say namaste to everybody who continues watching the videos. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.